Hello everyone, it is now 7 p.m. So the Monday, June 4th, 2018 meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen will now begin. Please be advised that this meeting is being made available on live television on Comcast Channel 15 and any comments will be recorded for future airing. We need to go to back. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States, States of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first up, we have a public service announcement from Chief Wall, William Boyle, and Robert DeMarzo. Thank you for coming in. Good evening. So we wanted to uh, kind of fill in the public a little bit about the sign campaign that's going around Pembroke. And I'm sure if you paid attention, you probably saw all the signs with the numbers on it and the problem that was out started last week. So that idea was to get people draw their awareness to the opioid crisis that we have going on in Pembroke, Plymouth County, and, and in the state of Massachusetts. And we purposely didn't put an explanation on it. We wanted to gather a little chatter and, and get people's use to fall a little bit about what's going on with this, what is the problem, and what do we do to solve it. Um, it was a citizen's initiative. Bob DiMazzo came to me and uh, wanted to know what we could do, and we had this idea about the signs. and. and kind of ran with it and Bob spearheaded this uh, working with the Chamber of Commerce. He uh, secured the funding through the generous donations of, of several benefactors in town and it was really easy. Um, and the ideas came pretty easy. Um, but the facts are out there. Unfortunately, we've had people die from overdoses. And we've had a lot of reversed overdoses, but that's a problem. So we wanted to uh, get the word out. So we created a Facebook page. It's, uh, facebook.com slash Pembroke Signs. And we're trying to put as much information out there as we can with uh, the Plymouth County Outreach, with PTAD, and with a lot of the groups, um, the, the Hopes, the Chaos groups, and all the other people out there that really have firsthand knowledge of crises in, in overdoses, family issues, um, recovery, treatment options. And uh, so that's where we're going. I guess I've said my piece. Well, um, it's amazing how many people have come up to me that have had or been touched somehow by an opioid problem or, or abuse, and it's not just in the state, it's in the country. Um, for those of you that don't do Facebook, a little explanation of the numbers. Uh, the first number of the 26 was the number of overdoses in Pembroke, and the four was the number of deaths in 2017. And on the other side was the number of overdoses in Plymouth County, which I think was 1,500 or something and 174 in uh, the county of deaths. So basically, every two weeks, there was an overdose in this, in this town. And every three months, somebody died. Um, it's a problem. And we have a good group of Pembroke Titans uh, doing a great job educating the youth. And we need to just keep spreading the message and we'll, we'll look at the website. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, as part of the chamber, Bob came to us to let us know, um, you know, what he's thinking of doing. I guess several years ago, when drunk driving was obviously a major issue, the chamber instituted a similar sign campaign. Um, and again, it's all about raising awareness. And this is more about putting business aside and really putting the community first to say, how can we help, you know, the, the kids of the community? And not just kids, but it, it affects everybody. Addiction doesn't discriminate against age, against social class, really against anybody. So for us as a business community, to get behind this initiative, to get the businesses to put up the signs, to get even just uh, regular citizens to, to make uh, people aware of this as well, uh, we're obviously help, happy to help uh, in every capacity and, and hope that this makes a difference you know, in every way possible. So thank you, gentlemen, for being a big part. Bob and obviously Chief Wall you know, really now how this is snowballing into other communities. But in, and that was kind of the idea. You know, our, our goal was to put out, I think, 80 signs, 80 different places. So you've got 80 more people working with you that have an understanding of what's going on, 80 people that have 
um, an idea of where to go if there's an issue. If somebody asks them, hey, what's what's this sign all about? What's this? You know, where do I go to get information? And and, and that's the idea. I mean, it's, it's a lot more than that. There's treatment options out there. There are people that have made successful recoveries. Um, the numbers are probably on the light side. I've had some people argue. I think there's been more overdoses and everything. And, and they're correct. Those numbers are, are based on what the medical examiner says. This is cause of death. And, and there may be other factors and other deaths and everything else. So you're on the low side, which makes it even worse. So you know, we, we all need to do what we can do. And, and we need to get it out in the open. We need to get people to talk about it. And we need them to you know, have places that they can go to get the help that they need. Because that's what it's all about, about treatment, recovery. We, we want success stories. You know, we want the numbers to be zero. And when we get to that, there will be plenty of signs out there saying hey, it's zero, and we hope we get there someday. So thank you very much. You actually time. have the fire chief here, too, if you'd like to say something to uh, I, think, I would agree with Rick that I think the members of the local service, um, just from my own standpoint, what my could tell you. We have to remember also how many of our residents have succumbed to this disease in other towns, too. So um, it affects our community greatly. Well, gentlemen, thank, thank you for your work, and it, hopefully it helps. I, I believe the awareness is a, is a, a great part of this, uh, uh, this problem, and I would like to know how we can help as a board, and it, if you don't know that right now, uh, please keep in contact with us. Uh, we. We recognize the issue. We recognize that it's a, a great problem, not just in our community, but the county, the state. And if there's anything we can do as a board to help, we're willing to do so. I think one of the, one of the easiest things to do is, is just be familiar with where the, the, the treatment programs are, how to get people involved, where the outreach clinics are. Because once a week, you know, in Bridgewater and Plymouth, there's outreach, and there's people from every walk of life, any kind of recovery, um, that are their support groups and, and they're there and available person to person. So that if you know somebody that's got a problem, if somebody asks you, so where do I go or what do I do, you can point them in the right direction. Sometimes that's all it takes. It's pretty simple. Right. I want to thank you, Chief Wall, actually, because uh, like I've talked to the county, and since you've been on the drug task force for the county, uh, our numbers exactly compared to Plymouth County in general. Have gone down because of your education, your outreach. And I want to thank you very much for that. Well, when the numbers get to zero, we'll there's always room for yeah. improvement. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming in and for the great work. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. before I run over to the Conservation Commission, um, I think the only item uh, that I would have any direct. Uh, dealing with would be the, under the town administrator's report all right we can take that that out of order um selectman brown had asked me about what the options that the town would have and the board would have for um individuals or for anybody um reviewing the uh, cba decision uh, of uh, may 21st regarding uh, 275 Oak Street and uh, so the uh, the one situation that the board would have is that um, several years ago when uh, Pembroke Woods 2 was approved by the ZBA um, it was a, uh, a situation where Pembroke Woods 1 hadn't even been constructed yet but Pembroke uh, but the ZBA at the time thought that it would be in the best interest of the town that they approved the other the additional 144 units up there uh, in the industrial park uh, to ensure that the town would be over 10 percent through the 2010 census um, because of the downturn in the economy Pembroke Woods 2 was never constructed and so we never received credit for the 144 units um, okay. but that was a situation where the board of selectmen then filed an appeal against the ZBA decision so I just wanted to let uh, the board know that, that that's uh, certainly an option that the Board of Selectmen have, um, you know, has right now, um, you know, as, as opposed to having uh, uh, the ZBA 
you know, receive another petition, um, you know, for that uh, for that project. So, uh, anybody have any questions regarding it? If the board wanted to seriously think about that, then that would be reasons for executive session at at the next uh, Slackman's meeting. So, I've been following this issue myself, uh, as I'm sure everyone else has. The land that, that belongs to, that is part of the town of Marshfield, is privately owned. There are two parcels of land uh, that are on the, we'll call it the Pembroke side of the highway. And these two privately held parcels, it's not the town of Marshfield, privately held parcels have the ability uh, to have a sign located on that property. And if you were coming down the highway, it would look as if it's in Pembroke. Right, and I think there's some issue regarding that because that that was Article 38 of the annual town meeting in Marshfield, and it would allow um, that particular industrial zone. It's called uh, I-1 um, that includes a little section of uh, the west side of uh, Route 3 in Pembroke. Um, but the article that would allow uh, a billboard such as being proposed at 275 Oak Street uh, that article was withdrawn and uh, so right now it doesn't appear that there's any legal basis for anything like that to be placed in that industrial zone that's not to say that they wouldn't try and you know an org and or get a decision that there's a B ZBA for a use variance in that zone but um, that that that's happened that's what happened with that article uh, at the Marshfield Town Meeting that it was withdrawn by the petitioner. So let's let's not del let's not get hoodwinked by that article being pulled off the town meeting floor. It was pulled off the town meeting floor for uh, for procedural reasons. Uh, they needed to change the <coughs> language, but the the same process can be done in the town of Marshfield that's being tried here in Pembroke. Right. Uh, ask for ask for a variance and they don't need a town meeting vote for that they just need their, their ZBA and their ZBA may be more than willing and more than amenable to uh, to approving a variance because it's essentially in land that's surrounded by Pembroke on the Pembroke side of the highway and Marshfield would get all of the tax revenue for it so it's it, for for the Marshfield folks, it'd be a no-brainer. It's approve a variance, and it's not even essentially in your in your town in your sight line for sure. So we have a we have a petitioner here that's a Pembroke resident, a Pembroke business, and we have a, a state sign law billboard law that only allows signs within 1,000 feet of each other. So if the land that's in Marshfield proper but on our side of the highway gets a variance then that cuts out uh, the petitioner that's that's a Pembroke resident in a Pembroke business and it cuts out the town of Pembroke from getting uh, the tax revenue for it and the structure of that tax revenue would be the billboard itself would be taxed it'd be taxed it'd be assessed by the assessors uh, but above and beyond what the assessors would uh, would rate that for taxes, uh, the petitioner and uh, and her partners would bump that up, and the number has even gone up since the ZBA hearing to fifty thousand dollar total. So, regardless of what the uh, the assessment is, the town of Pembroke would would be getting fifty thousand dollars in taxes every year for a sign that is hundreds of feet just a couple of hundred feet away from the Marshfield property so it seems to me we're getting a sign put up there do we get a sign put up on the Pembroke side uh, on, on Pembroke property or on Marshfield property all on the same side of the highway it makes sense that that this variance should be granted for for those reasons so what do you say now that the, it should should be granted to Marshville residents? It should be granted to the to the Pembroke business. Our ZBA 
should reconsider that vote. And there's a yeah. and Ed suggested oh, a way that, yeah. that Ed suggested a way that this board can appeal that decision, okay. so that uh, we can ask them to reconsider. And yeah, yep. and well, because it went without prejudice too, they could resubmit and hopefully, like I said, sooner than later. If we since has to be unanimous decision with our ZBA, we got to make sure these guys get on that everyone gets on board. Two to one decision, it's got to be unanimous. You know, losing fifty grand out of that, you know, that, I mean, unless they have fifty thousand dollar check on them to give us the town, that's an embarrassment to us. That's hurting the town people. Saying, hey, guess what? We want more of your money out of your pocket. And this annoys me. And I'm sorry to be upset about this, but I have to be. Because one person, we can't get fifty grand. It was thirty-two thousand. Now fifty grand. I'm, I'm appalled by. It. To John's point, and it's a good one. Um, we almost lost Lowe's over one vote uh, some years ago, and um, we had uh, it was uh, Jerry Dempsey who was the new appointee, who took the place of um, another gentleman and uh, became the vote that made Lowe's happen. And we've gotten substantial tax revenue off of that, obviously. And it's a good business to have right next to a highway. It doesn't bother a lot of the small residential neighborhoods and that kind of thing. So I, I think if there's going to be a sign there, and there's going to be, um, there's no question about it. We've discussed it with um, the advisory committee that we needed new sources of revenue, new ways to make, um, you know, fifty thousand dollars. There's nothing to, um, you know nothing to ignore. So I, I think John is quite right. I think we need to encourage, um, you know, the ZBA, while they are an independent body, um, it doesn't mean we can't disagree with them on occasion. So uh, I think we need to express our uh, concern and our wishes that uh, they reconsider and <coughs> grant the application. So uh, for, the, for the public's knowledge, just to, to to uh, amplify uh, what John said and what, what Ed mentioned also, uh, there, there are two paths for this. So the applicant uh, was denied without prejudice, so they can apply once again uh, for a variance and go through the process one more time. Uh, but I think I, as a board member, feel strongly enough that this board should take action and, and uh, appeal the decision so that we take a, uh, a positive affirmative action and, and we, we're not sitting back waiting for another hearing to go through. Uh, I think it's that important because there is going to be a sign there and it should be our sign. I think we're all in agreement with that and as Ed mentioned, we'd have to take action on that in executive session. Um, exactly. And before we uh, change business, there are some folks here uh, that are interested in, in this uh, uh, topic and I wonder if they wanted to speak here or if they just wanted us to speak. Absolutely. Great time for anybody to come up oh, to the microphone. I just came by to see if you had any questions. Um, and it's here from Outfront Media, too. So and we're just here to um, provide support. Janet's here to provide support, too, as a business owner. and. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or concerns, I think between the two of us, we can answer anything about the property or the proposal. So uh, just for, from your vantage point, can you just reiterate how close the two properties are, the Pembroke property and the Marshfield property? Yes, so the two properties are about 490 feet, depending on placement of the structure. Um, one spaces out the other, obviously. The Marshville billboard is actually, I think it's only about 600 feet away from the residential zoning um, of the apartment complex, the Pembroke Woods. Yeah. So it's much closer. It's potentially visible to that apartment complex where we're in a depression. We're about 1,100 feet-ish away from that property. And the canopy tree line will uh, block us from any visibility from that. Very good, thank you. So he's just given us uh, one more reason uh, to be strongly in favor of this project being being in Pembroke. Uh, $50,000 uh, $50, in revenue the town will get 
and protect the citizens. There are over 200 families in Pembroke Woods that, uh, that are our citizens that uh, we would like to protect from uh, light pollution beyond what the state minimum says. Very good points. Go ahead. I just, uh, I just wanted to add, um, you know, kind of a bunch of those EPA meeting as well. Uh, I'm a business owner in Pembroke. I live in Pembroke. I want what's right for my community, and I try to run my business in that way. Karen has run her business in Pembroke for a very long time. She's a Pembroke resident. She's come up with something that will really benefit the town of Pembroke. And as Arthur said, a sign is going to go in there anyhow. So as a, as a business owner, it's really puzzling to me um, if the town, the board of selection, the ZBA, the entire town wants to welcome in businesses, this isn't a great way to do it. To have somebody say, essentially, I don't want it here with really not a lot of reasons why it doesn't meet the bylaws. That's why that's why there's variants. That's why variances are granted. And the laws surrounding the, the billboards are far more strict than our bylaws. So for a ZBA member to have that much power to uh, turn down a Pembroke business that has done nothing but good in this town, uh, it's really puzzling. It doesn't send a message that says, we welcome businesses here. It sends a message that says, we don't need your $50,000. It didn't make any sense to me at all. So if there's any way that uh, you as the Board of Selectmen can encourage uh, the ZBA to reconsider this action and to approve this, it's only going to benefit um, the town of Pembroke as well as Karen's business. And um, it would send a, a much stronger positive message to encourage other people to join this town. That's very true. And the Board of Selectmen will take action on it. Robert? Um, Bob Marzo, former selectman. Um, I didn't plan about being here for this, but I feel an obligation to do some history. Uh, I think this maybe what Arthur was referring to was the low situation. Uh, I was on the board at the time, and I'm not taking a position for or against the sign because I don't have all the facts, but when Lowe's wanted to come to town, it was a three to one vote, two to one vote, and it was turned down. Uh, the applicant uh, appealed it. The town took no defense and the appeal was uh, overturned and the applicant got to her. I believe that's the way it worked. So whatever information that is helpful to you. Folks. Well, actually, Jerry Dempsey replaced um, Howard. That was afterwards. Uh, Jerry is after uh, the whole appeal and all that. Because Howard, Howard the, the person on the Board of Appeals was not reappointed. That's right. And where there was no contest uh, put up by the town, there was, uh, Jerry was able to vote <laughs> Uh, in favor of it, and it gave us three to zero. Yeah, I think it was remanded back. Yeah. The court remanded back. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Uh, so I think that concludes our discussion on the ZBA's decision. Thank you all for coming in. So it is now 7.23. We have our public hearing at 7.30. So we will have seven more minutes for the public hearing for those of you who are here for that. Oh, it has to be done in executive session. So in the meantime, we'll be addressing the board action items, starting with the preliminary review of candidates for reappointment on June 11th and June 25th, 2018. Selections agenda for April for <coughs> June 11th and June 25th. This is just a preliminary review. Okay, so it's not a fear we have a motion at this time. I know I don't have any questions on these individuals. Anybody else? Hearing none, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on. But Bill Bolter might come back and have a question or two this so we'll address that a little later on. He asked his question later. <laughs> oh, okay, so he already asked his question. So the next board action item is a vote to approve the minutes of April 23rd, 2018, April 30th, 2018, May 14th, and May 21st, all 2018. You want them as a group or individually? I think we can take them as a group. 
Okay, I'd move that we approve the minutes of the meeting of April 23rd, 2018, April 30th, 2018, May 14th, 2018, and May 21st, 2018. Second. All righty, have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'd a half, because since I wasn't a selectman at the time, I can't vote on the first two. So I, I have to abstain from the first two meeting minutes since I wasn't a board member. Okay, so I think we should take them all individually then in that case. Thank you for reminding us of that. And, uh, just a uh, just point of information, uh, as a sitting selectman, you, you can vote on minutes, uh, but it's not very prudent to do so. <laughs> uh, if we were in a bind and needed a quorum vote, then that's that's a case when it would be proper. Okay, thank you, Dan. You could be listed as president, not voting. Okay. So for the, Arthur, would, would you be willing to amend? I, I would amend the motion to approve the minutes of April 23rd and April 30th, 2018. Second. All right, so we have a, an amended motion to take those two separately. So all those in favor? Aye. Two present not voting, and I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, this passes three to zero to two. I would move approval of the minutes of the meeting of May 14th and May 21st, 2018. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so this motion passes as well. Four to zero to one, with our, our bill present and not voting. There's now a 727. Sabrina, can we take the public hearing now, or do we have to wait until right at 7.30? No, we can go right now. I'll just fall on the hallway and make sure there's no one here. But they could be disconnected. All righty, so we have a public hearing with Irving Oil Marketing Incorporated for a license application for two underground storage tanks for 32,000 gallons of gasoline, 8,000 gallons of diesel. And this is at 92 Washington Street, D14-8, 83 and 84. Thank you for all coming in tonight for this public hearing. And this site plan has been approved by the planning board and the special permit has been approved by the ZBA. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, Hussein Sivinchkin with MHF Design Consultants. Um, we're civil engineers out of Salem, New Hampshire for Irving Oil. Um, so basically, as you indicated, we, we have been approved by the planning board and the zoning board. Um, what we're proposing here is a brand new Irving Oil gas station. I can go over the plan a little bit. So it's a 3,200 square foot convenience store with an overhead canopy with five fuel dispensers and underground storage tanks in this location. Off of Washington Street, there will be a full access driveway proposed. Off of um, Route 139, I'm not gonna try to say the name. Scooset Street. Scooset, okay. <laughs> My name's difficult, so I don't have any <laughs> difficult names. Um, we have a right-in, right-out driveway located here, and then a two-way driveway located further down. So basically, we're in front of the Board of Selectmen to get approval for the fuel storage that we're proposing on site. So there's two underground double wall fiberglass fuel storage tanks, state of the art. Um, they will be monitored via a console that's located in the store. There are um, tank sumps on each compartment. So there's two tanks, four total <coughs> compartments, 32,000 gallons of gasoline, which is which would equate to about 24,000 gallons of regular gasoline. and 8,000 gallons of Supreme Super, and we have another compartment for 8,000 gallons of diesel. Um, so basically, we've, we've filled out the application, we've submitted the plans to the fire department, and I believe he's here tonight to review the plans. Um, I believe, you know, he's, he's accepted <coughs> the plans. Yep. So we're, in, we're here in front of you to get approval of the um, fuel storage license. All righty, thank you for coming in. And does anybody, anyone on the select have a question? Yes, so so I understand you're here for for the license of the tank. 
uh, but this might be the first time the public's had a chance to to, to look at the, the plans uh, uh, through our video cameras. Uh, uh, could you just give a quick overview of uh, how the traffic will flow even better, some of the planning board said, than it does today in that site? Currently, I believe there are three, there's four total buildings. Three of them are one-story retail buildings. One is a two-story retail building. I believe there's multiple driveways along uh, Scusett Street and Washington Street. So we're consolidating those into, like I said, three three driveways. There have been traffic studies done, and you know the the, the, the public was, I believe, at the planning board and zoning board meetings. Um, these are both mass DOT roadways, so we are we are going through the mass DOT process, and I believe you yeah, we, we see. We do have, have there, well, we received the um, permit from the like, Department of Transportation on both, on both those streets, both so governed by the Department of Transportation. So there were traffic studies um, proposed, um, prepared and provided to both the, the town and the state. And we did, like uh, Mike mentioned, we did get approval of the driveway permits. So um, again, we've located the driveways further away from the intersection. This is a right in, right out. No left turns at this driveway, and then left turns further away from the intersection. So we have we have taken the, the left turns from the site and located them as far away from the intersection as possible. Thank you. I, I know that the folks that I've spoken to at the planning board have looked favorably on, on this site, so I just wanted to give you a chance uh, on camera here tonight for some of the folks at home that don't normally make it to the meetings to be introduced to your project. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, and also, I would like to ask, what assurances do does Pembroke have that these underground underground storage tanks won't contaminate our environment? Well, again, um, they are double wall fiberglass tanks. They're monitored, so there's two two fiberglass walls with an interstitial space that's in between the two the two fiberglass walls of this tank. Um, there's a brine solution within within the tank that is constantly monitored. So the tank on top of the tank is a reservoir that has a sensor within the within the reservoir that is constantly monitored through the store. So if there's any any discrepancy, any any either increase or loss of um, interstitial fluid between the tanks, an alarm would go off, and um, you know the, the proper authorities would be contacted. But again, the, these are double wall fiberglass tanks. They're state of the art. In the past, there were single wall steel tanks that corroded, that were used. Single wall fiberglass was used for, for quite a while. Double wall steel tanks were also used, but these are double wall fiberglass. They have, they have a, good, a pretty good track record throughout the U.S. All right, thank you for that explanation. <coughs> sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering how you're going to, uh, I guess, level that that area off because on 139 to 53 that's a huge steep driveway going up there where the jewelry store is now uh, I'm just wondering how that's going to be all level because I mean that's a big massive property right now that you bought several parcels so I'm just wondering how that's gonna right so there's a combination of grading out grading out the site so from this driveway to this driveway there is a great difference mm -hmm. so you would be coming up the canopy would be sloping up as well okay kind of meet the existing grades over here. There are retaining walls proposed around this, in this area and along this part of um, Scusett Street. So there are retaining walls grading to get to get the grades to work. So we, we designed the site to have acceptable grades. So okay. some sites you'll see like eight to 10 percent. These, these are all within the 5 percent range, which is a common engineering practice. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Uh, if you'll accept the motion, I'm ready. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, she Does anybody from the public have any questions? I uh, hear none. We'll accept the motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of Irving Oil Marketing LLC for a license to store 32,000 gallons of gasoline and 8,000 gallons of diesel underground at 223 Church Street, map G15, lot 32, by installing two new underground storage tanks, UST. Second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Can you hold one moment? You hold it for one moment. This is on me. That should be there. Oh. Uh, can I just make amend that motion, Mr. Chairman, to read 92 Washington Street, parcel ID number D14-8, 83 and 84. All right, so we have a motion and a second on an amended motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. So this passes 4 to 0 to 1 with one abstention. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. Good night. Bobby, that was an easy one for you. <laughs> Happy birthday, huh? Thank you. <laughs> I know it was over 60, do I? the easiest meeting today. <laughs> well, they'll make up for it somehow. Yes, you know? <laughs> All right, typically at this time, we move on to old business. However, with the number of people in the crowd tonight, I'd like to take Ask the Selectman out of order to see if anybody has anything under Ask the Selectman. Just to pull some plans, please. Yes, Hey everybody. Hi. Hi. Sure. Okay. Um, there was an automobile accident at the intersection of Plain Street and Lake Street last week on a Wednesday at 2.49 in the afternoon. And we have in the past the Board of Selectmen has appealed to Old Colony Planning Council to review traffic data, crash statistics, do a traffic count, and send that information into Mass DOT. And in the last 18 months, that intersection was rejected for a four-way stop, as the board requested. So with the current data on file, it did not meet the standard. Um, with the crash on Wednesday, some of the residents came into the office and asked if there was anything they could do to help or anything that could be done. The town administrator got on the phone to the DPW director to have them go clear that line of sight with the vegetation that had grown up in the spring, see if they could implement some of the stuff that Mass DOT said we could do which was get rid of the vegetation that causes an obstruction to the sight line. But um, perhaps the new crash could alter the data. Maybe it makes sense to have the conversation to appeal to Old Colony Planning Council again. And the residents are here to talk to the board about that. All right, thank you for that background. Yeah, that, thank you. My name is Ignacio Nogar. I live in the 58 Plain Street. I've been there for 15 years. Obviously, I don't have the police record, but I've been there, so I know exactly how often it does occur. Are you right on the corner? That's right. Well, yeah. not the corner. It's the, the, the second house going to the lake. Going back towards the Gidoa's house. Yes. So it's towards, uh, so the intersection is between uh, the, other uh, the other way. The other way. Come up oh, to okay. Lake Street and take a left on the plane. All right. He's the second house over it. And there's a lot of trees right there. When you yeah. come up on Lake Street, you try to look down. Yeah, Street, you're kind of you preaching to the choir here. Yeah. I don't know if those trees are on private property or on. So what I think is going on here, just the, those statistics that you frankly uh, mentioned, those are uh, statistics, but they are probably not acknowledging all the facts. <coughs> the facts are not just measured by the accidents, but by objectively that you have to be there and see what's going on. There's low visibility, zero visibility, because the vegetation is there. So it's populated by kids going from middle school, high school, Silver Lake. So that's a huge risk to me. There's a lot of speed going to Lake, because they don't see anything that will stop them in a straight shot. They go, instead of 35, go 45, 50. The person coming from Lake to Silver Lake or middle school or turning to my 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 my, my street lake, they can not stop on the line of the stop. They can because they have zero visibility. They have to start shooting a little bit to be able to have visibility. As they do that, they get hit by a car coming 45, 50. So we're talking about kids, we're talking about safety issue. That it might it might be indicated by these statistics, but not thoroughly. So 
maybe the four stopping intersection may be rejected by the state, but they are not, I don't think they are aware of these issues, the disability. So you have absolutely zero visibility. So you can't really see what's going on. Um, and once again, there are three schools within a mile. Um, I know that being at least between Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend every year, 10 to 12 a car accidents. Likely now and now he has died, but it could happen. That's well, my last perception. Last year there was four within like four weeks. The end of the end of spring into summer. Four. And something <coughs> has been done. What can be done? Can there be a four-way stop put up there? Can there be a light put up there? Flashing light. It, it's dangerous. You you wouldn't believe if you sat in some of the driveways. We're four houses behind the country corner store. You sat in our driveways. You would not believe how fast the cars go down there. And we all, we all have kids, grandchildren, yeah. whoever. I mean, whoever it might be. What's it take a fatality for somebody to do something about it? It's bad up there. That's right. They see the sign, the 35. But once again, it's a straight shot. They have no reason to go 35. Because they don't see a flashing light. That's not a stop. It's a free invitation to go 45, 50. Which is sometimes it's OK, because they can manage. They can they're looking. The person who is at the stop can't see what's going on. By the time they make a decision, they're in the middle of the road at the mercy. I'm actually surprised that my kids have well, they're probably, they're really aware of what's going on. But to me, I'm risking my life. And everybody who's there is risking their lives 10 times more than everybody else. And once again, we're not the only one. There are three schools, elementary school, middle school, and Silver Lake. Right at the, within a mile. Really, really risky the novelty of the, uh, the drivers. So those facts might be uh, missing from the that petition of the four-way intersection, I mean, four-way stop, or flashing light or something. So <clears throat> this board did recognize that there's, there's an issue up there, an ongoing issue. And we petitioned the state for four-way four four, four stop um, 18 months ago, I believe it was. And, and the, the numbers didn't, didn't hold up from the state. We can't. We can't as a. We, we can't as a town put up a four wheels, four way stop. We don't have permission. We need the state to grant us permission to do that. But since this accident, and uh, and from what you're you're asking and, and presenting here tonight, we can ask again. Matter of fact, uh, the entity that, that you petitioned for us is the old Colony Planning Council, our regional planning agency, and I'm going to be at that meeting tomorrow. So I can personally present it tomorrow and, and speak to those people on a personal note. And this board can have our town administrator write a formal letter to back that up. And we'll, we'll ask them to, uh, to do another study. And it has to, it's, I know it's slow, but that's how the state works. They have to do another study. They put the strips in the road, do the counters, and find out how fast they're going, how many cars are going by. This new accident will go on the ledger from, from the, the police reports. Uh, so that will add to it. And we can even uh, uh, get citizens, a citizen's petition or a, a, a brief letter or an email will be enough to be supported back up to our letter. And so that the state can see that it's, uh, as you say, more than just a bunch of numbers. There's more to it than just that. It requires site inspection. Because yeah. that will bring the magnitude to a big risk not just the numbers. And once again, the numbers are indicative, but the numbers are random. And I think a site inspection of whoever is doing that assessment, it'll be required to me to get a fully understanding of the issue, not just looking at the numbers in the paper. Um, but once again, th thank to God that you know, nothing has happened. I think uh, two years ago, there was a sign in front of my yard. Uh, we were joking, my wife and I, because it was just a cross yellow sign with a cross, nothing else. And I thought, well, we are the Holy Week now, we're the Holy Family now. <laughs> um, that, that, incidentally, that, that sign got blown by a car. It was just a half of the sign went in my yard, huh. and that was gone. I still have the, the half of the sign um, by its feet. So that, that sign, where, where, I mean, it didn't really do the trick, but it disappeared. Shows people that there's an intersection coming by. Maybe we can have the DPW take a look at that and put that back up. So speaking of the DPW, uh, after the accident, uh, and, and you folks had called town town hall, uh, the town administrator asked the DPW to go right out to the intersection and cut back some brush. Was that done? 
after the accident last week? Yeah. No, I don't believe so. No, my word. I was up here this morning and it looks the same to me, like you said. I'm, I'm, I'm not a quarter of the way into the, into one lane, but pretty close, yeah. just to be able to see by. But I looked at the, the tree that really blocks it. I'm going to say it's about eight to ten feet off the, off the edge of the road. So I don't know if that's town property or not. I think it's town property, but anyway, that sign that it was uh, in my yard, um, I didn't really complain at all because I thought, you know, anything they do, it, it look awful, but, you know, everything they do prevent uh, any accident, welcome, even though it looks awful in my property, but I was happy with that until somebody took it, my speed. But that that sign actually remind me that one of those uh, signs, just to give you an example, the signs that you see in the highway where you say, be careful with the above wires. I think the wires are right there. Yeah. How good that do? That doesn't do any good because they're telling you there's a wire right there. Somebody's driving. It's already passed. The person driving in my ha in my street is already 50. That sign, 50 feet from the intersection. That's too late. That's too late. It's better than nothing. But I, I, when I saw it there, I said, okay, well, I'm not gonna do anything. So I understand the concern. I think it's concerning in, in, in town, but I think the measures are not matching the risk, especially with three schools around. And a clear shot in that street. I mean, that street that goes to, to Route 27 is straight. So people don't feel the, the danger to slow down, to go 30, 35. Why? I don't right. have a stop, I don't have a light, I don't have anything. 50. Are you oh, saying it needs to be a certain amount of accidents before anybody does anything about anything? It's a combination of uh, the traffic volume, speed, and accidents. Because there, there's a, a, a thought up at, at, at the state and the Department of Transportation uh, that a four-way four stop uh, is, it has a danger to itself. It be, it's not always the best case. Uh, so they, they, they look into it greatly before they allow a four-way stop. I understand it's a concern on the traffic because it's a, it's a once again it's a schools there, so slowing down much traffic will be tough. But the, you know, if it's not a, a four-way stop, maybe a flashing light where it indicate clearly the, the dangerous intersection or a dangerous intersection sign. I think there this this has, has, a, has a, doesn't have to be four-way intersection. They have all the things that can be done. Need more controls. Yeah. So definitely options we'll look into for the uh, more signs and a flashing light. And Gene can come in next week if you want to try to schedule them to report on what signs are there and what signs are gone and what signs are needed. Sure. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, this gentleman's a got idea. a question. In, in, in lieu of a four-way intersection where it's been, what, what would you say, 18 months ago? You, 18 months. You looked into this. Um, that would be the ultimate that would do that, but uh, on... My wife and I, when we go on vacations, we go to Maine, and there's a uh, up at Byron, Maine, Mexico, Maine, which is uh, which is kind of a depressed area, but they have a similar situation, four-way intersection, but a hill on the right-hand side. You can't see anything coming from the right. You can't see anything coming from the left. So instead of instead of making a four-way intersection, what they did is say we were coming up Lake Street two plane on the far side they had a sign and it was um, illuminated lit um, by solar and it would have picture of a car on each side on the one side and it'd be flashing if there was a car coming from the left or flashing if it was coming from the right and I'm telling you they might have been three years ago they put this sign up but, you know one time it wasn't flashing and I said I don't know if it's working. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna move. But within a minute or so, no flash. So I went out. Sure enough, no cars coming. But every other time I've been up there, it's been flashing either from the left, from the left or the right, or from both, and made it much more safer at this intersection. Yeah. You know, I don't have anything to say how many accidents they had. But we lived on Plain Street 40 some odd years, and I wasn't involved in an accident. Right at that intersection, I drove an oil truck, and a, and a young lady with a little kid coming right through that stop sign, 
you plow right, in, right, right, into, the, uh, right into the right into the oil truck. That was the Wednesday accident. The person went right to the stop sign. Yeah, and that's another thing. The stop it's on the right side, so it kind of like a two-piece the, the, the street. The street kind of open up, right? The the line of the stop is way inside. If you stop right there, like the police will tell you, you have so the zero visibility. You get you gotta go in. I always really say that. But also the stop is way <coughs> on your right side. When the sun is hitting you on the face, sometimes you don't see it. Honestly, you can't see it. Or if it's dark at night, there's no flashing lights or anything in the stop. You don't see it. So I see it because I live there. But I can't understand someone who is not familiar with that. Depend on the day when the sun is hitting you on the face or at night. You might not be able to see it. And when somebody's coming 50, 50 miles per hour there, it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, I think 50 miles an hour is a little excessive to be on Plain Street or on Lake Street. Uh, no. No. No, no, but if someone, someone doesn't have visibility and he's trying to go in, 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 yeah. in and leave the car in the middle. Oh, yeah, I, yes. I drive up to there at least once a week and it's uh, you're taking your life in your hands. And I, I agree with you that you need to do something before there's a reason for yeah. uh, you know, as if there's a fatality or something, and yeah. um, you know, Dan can carry the message for us yeah. back to um, the old Colony Planning Council and have them take another look at it because it it is something that should be a four-way stop, in my opinion. I'm not a traffic expert, but I I'm realistic enough to know that you know that's a dangerous road, uh, dangerous intersection. So. Now you said something was done 18 months ago. What what was that again? The, the, the traffic study. Traffic study. This traffic study. The the so they they took the count of the cars going by, the speed of the cars going by at, at various times of the day. Uh, you know, it's it's those tubes that go across the ground. You might you might run over them every now and then, and yeah. maybe not just our town, but every town. That's how it's done. The counters. I haven't seen. I haven't seen any. But yeah. And we sit out kind of driveway a lot, and we see what we'll both these cars. You you want, you can. I wish you could sit there someday and watch the cars go by. It's terrible. You can't come on now. <laughs> yeah. I'm still wondering where that sign went. I still wondering where that sign went. You know, I know half of where it is. It's in my yard. But I still I still keep it as a souvenir, but I wonder where that sign went. Why do they think it's a speedway street? Because it's it's got I mean, a lot of it's woods and it's hard it's just horrible. It's they really have, uh, Gilbert is my name, we live uh, further up Lane Street towards the uh, valley. And I can think of a couple of things that would help the situation. I, I don't live close enough to have personally experienced the problem at the corner, although it's a serious problem. But when they can buy our house, uh, leaving Valley Street usually, a lot of times, especially on a Friday or Saturday night, they go on 80 by the time they get to our house, which is probably 200 yards. And a couple of things I've noticed is police presence is a minimum. I, I realize there's no place for them to park down there and be concealed, so that as soon as somebody uh, comes down to the end of Valley Street and makes the corner, they normally park on the Newport Avenue, which is directly across the street from my house. They're visible as soon as the guy gets there, so they don't goose it. They just take off like you or I would take off. Second thing is, to my knowledge, the only uh, speed limit sign I've seen is at the end of Plain Street by Forest and Pelham. So if someone comes out of Valley, there's nothing there to tell them, remind them that this is a residential zone and the speed limit is 35. If we had a sign immediately at the end of Valley Street, I think that would help immensely. And the third thing I think would definitely contribute would be one of those flashing signs that says you're going 40 out of 50 in a 35 mile an hour zone. When somebody sees that, human nature tells you, I better slow down. But the, also, the, the other thing I think human nature helps a lot is Firstly speaking, if I go by the uh, Hogglemark Arena on my way to Center Town, I always think of a police cop on the right-hand side, parked in there by the rink. And I always think of when I go by, uh, there's another place in town too, I can't think of it. But if, if, if you're there four, five, six, seven times and somebody driving by sees you, they're going to remember when they come around that corner or something, there may be a cop up here. And I think that helps. So police presence, another stop sign, and maybe one of those flashing radar signs would help the problem, I think, at the bottom. Those are great suggestions, though. Do you have another comment from the audience? So just a question. I'm not, I don't go to that intersection too often, so like, call me out if I'm totally wrong on this. Um, when you're coming down Lake Street towards Plain Street, it kind of like 
gets wider until it's basically two lanes. So if you're on the right side, you can turn right. If you're in the middle, left side, whatever, you can go straight forward. When you're on the right side, there's no visibility coming from the left. Oh, so you kind of have to keep, yeah. so you have right. to keep inching forward, and that's super scary because, like you said, by the time you're out there, you can already get hit. Exactly. One really simple solution to at least pilot with traffic cones might just be to get rid of that, make it one lane. That's going to be frustrating for people turning right, but it would make it a lot safer. Um, I know that in slightly denser areas, um, a little farther north of us, they've been experimenting with a lot of that, making intersections more narrow, so the curve is less of like a wide angle. Because right now it's basically the shape of a highway on ramp. You can just turn right and keep going without slowing down at all. When you make it more narrow, even if there's no cars waiting, you have to slow down in order to make the right turn because you can't make that like whip around the corner. So maybe is Pembroke allowed to just test it out, put traffic cones basically in a right angle shape, just far enough that people can make the right turn without like, you know what I mean? And just see if that fixes it at all, makes like a traffic calming measure. Just an idea. You know what I'm like saying though? I do, yeah, I do, yeah. sure. How about a turnabout? Turn uh, another school, roundabout. School, it's a school buses. It I mean, they put them in other places in Pembroke and other towns around those roundabouts. I mean, I don't get it. Why can't something be done? If there's been four accidents last year and now one, we're already slapped into the summer. There was one last week. Well, so the, so the state looked at it and said no, but that doesn't mean we have to take no for an answer. We can. We, we can have another conversation with them, starting with the with our regional planning agency, and see what uh, see what we can implement on our own. Whether it's si some sort of signage, police pr presence is something that we can speak to the chief about. They can pack a night driveway. Right. Country corner, country corner. Right. In the country corner, they can stop there, right? Yeah, the speed but limit the flashing sign. Right. Then they get there, they start slowing down. Way up at the beginning of Plain Street, and come flying down and they're flying they're flying and i sit there and i wait and they don't stop and you can hear them go right out onto route 27 and you just wait and you say oh my god they're going to get hit it, it's just an um, it's just it's just a straight road that goes right down and they don't stop they just fly you can hear the exhaust like a motorcycle or a boost up car yeah. When they're slowing down, yeah, like that, when they get near the corner, yeah, and then on the other side on 27. And it's not 30 or 40 miles an hour. They're gone. They're gone. This happens. It, what she, Every day. What she said, it happens. I won't say weekly. It's it's. Every I don't day. say daily. Yeah. That you sit there and you're going, okay, is, you're gonna hear the crash. You're gonna hear it. Is it happening? Happen I mean. Do you have any number, you know, when they said that the state, the number of crashes? Yeah, so what we could do is if you could leave your information with Sabrina, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll give you the whole report. Okay. It's, it's public information, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get a copy over to you, either paper or email, whatever you like best. But that, that's why I was trying, to, when I started talking, I was saying this, it's not just one issue, speed. Speed, poor visibility, and the risk of the schools around okay. with yeah, young yeah, young people driving around. Right. Those are the three things. If it's a speed issue, that could be handled. If it's a visibility issue by itself, that could be handled. If it's a school zone dangerous area, that is the three combi it's the three factor combination. You know? And I understand that they're having traffic for the school, it makes things a little bit harder to fix. If you can put I mean you're gonna put a rotary there and the bus is gonna go cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's probably not enough room realistically yeah. for exactly. a round so of you understand the magnitude. The thing is just that we got it or something because I work from home on Wednesdays from May to, to September. This every week is at least one, one incident. So it's just too much. We've had it is too much. The mid, we're, we did trying to mid street. One hit a telephone pole and another one hit down the um, fire hydrant and went way into a house, they're going too fast. And something's got to be done. There's little kids that ride bicycles down there all the time. Right. I was out in the yard last week and I heard that crash and I just went, it was early. Yeah. When you hear that crash, it's a sound you don't want to hear. Well, it's automatically a you think, is it one of your loved ones that's out there in the car? Is it when somebody you know that got hit or got the accident? It's just 
it's just it's terrible up there. Not quite, something's got to be done. Yeah, and, it, and it's it's important for us to to hear this for, from the public because you know we've done the study on it. The state came back with the information, and you know we're looking at it. All right, we did our due diligence, but to hear it from the folks that, that live it every day, that that's what we need to to know because we're taking it from so-called uh, transportation experts, uh, but they're not people experts. You know, they, they don't get into the mind of uh, the folks that are driving through stop signs and, yeah. and how can you avoid, they, they just think logically like an engineer. Well, there's a stop sign there. Why wouldn't someone stop for it? And they don't factor in the, the human factor as much as they should. There's no workplace. The stop sign, I keep saying, is no workplace. There's no workplace for someone who is not really paying attention. And unfortunately, there are many of those. There are many of those. The sign is placed way on the right side. Uh, people, I can tell you, in the middle of the day or night, they don't see it. They don't see it. They're not familiar. I have my own tricks because I've been there for 15 years. I know how to go through the intersection with pretty much risk free. You kind of have to stop, kind of slow down a lot, and watch left and right and pray. So there's there's a, a sign, there's an intersection of Elm and, and Taylor Street where they put a sign, uh, you know, probably about 30, 40 yards before the, the intersection, stop ahead. And it, it really worked out well because when you're coming from the Duxbury side, you, you don't see that stop sign until it's, t it's almost too late, just like yours. Yeah. So that's something we, we'll look into as well. So if that was down there, why can't, are there more accidents over there? Than, uh, there was because that, that one was turned into a four-way uh, stop sign about five years ago or so. It went through this whole process and the state said, yes, the, this, this one requires a four-way stop. Why would we reject it? <laughs> they, they have a certain amount of criteria, and so some engineer with uh, the pocket protector said, no, nope, not this one. Really? Mm -hmm. Camden's got a great stop sign. Well, maybe, maybe the gate going down by the near, um, like St. Joseph's Church. Yes. Yeah. The Church of Sullivan Funeral Home. And that sign blinks all the time, and you stop. Right. You stop because it's confusing as to which way to go, actually. Well, <laughs> I agree, yes, but... You still, you don't miss that stop sign, and um, something. Yeah, it's not. Good. Well, we can yeah. go to the police chief, as Dan pointed out, and ask him to get the flashing sign up there, and um, you know, call some attention to it. And the signage should be an issue that we can settle with the DPW. How about speed um, limit signs? That that's the that's the flashing sign you meant. The speed limit, the trailer sign. Yeah, yeah. The 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 trailer. Uh, 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 speed yeah. trap sign. That's and if, and if the chief could find someone that will let him uh, let him put him in the park uh, driveway, yeah. it'd be helpful. How about a stationary school? Yeah. Speed what's your name? What's your address? <laughs> Is that speed like the st like the stop well, sign or? Well, it's 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 temporary. He he'll tow it he'll tow it over there. Leave it there for a week or so. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll look into uh, other avenues. Uh, but that that's a good start. That can be implemented right away. I got quite a bit of room off the street too. It's clear, it's stone, you can put it right there. I'd love to see more police monitoring that. Because you can't believe what yeah. We have a standing joke that if a police officer sat there on a Friday or Saturday night every week, you'd pay a salary book for a year. <laughs> and now right. it's getting busier because it's getting summertime, and that's the main plain street. It's the main way to go to Duxbury Beach. Traffic's going to get even heavier and worse. Yeah. And there are three schools in a mild circumference there. So that, that's something that the station does too. All right. Yeah. Young guys driving around. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I shouldn't say that because it, most of the, the accidents that I have present have been a, a adults. Yeah. All adults. Yeah. I know. I almost was in an accident. I was coming off of um, Valley Street and I had a wedge out a little bit and everything looked clear because there was vegetation there and I, I wedged out a little bit ready to go and boom a car come working down and I mean they go by so fast that they're on top of you before you no. even know it you know right. it was clear when I was looking shoom, and there was a fatality on that then years ago but most of yeah, it's, it's important for us to know this firsthand, but it, it, make sure uh, Sabrina has your information So, as, as, for two things. So as, as we do start to work toward this, 
uh, you can be informed. And right. secondly, if you're not seeing, if you're not seeing it, it's time to give us a little kick in the rear. Let's go, guys. Get it done. Believe it, it or not, I do tell a lot more people. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it, 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 I think there was a little bit of misinformation. Hopefully, they just someone gave him, he didn't understand, or someone gave him the wrong information. That doesn't that doesn't sound right. But <clears throat> you're here, and it, did, it doesn't take your whole neighborhood to to make us get into action. Just a couple of folks, or a phone call to us, or an email to us. Uh, that's all we really need, because because I, I don't I don't know. We, th we thought we did our due diligence, uh, but it, it, it's not enough. We need to do more. Yeah, it's certainly true. We, we do hear you. We'll, 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 we will work to make things better in that area. Yeah, thank, okay. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you. thank you very much. Have a good night. Dan. Is there other avenues we can take besides Old Colony or having our representation either have a letter to Old Colony or to Mass DOT to help us out with this? We'll do both. Uh, Old, Old Colony uh, is, a, is a, a liaison for us. Yeah, I don't want to step so over the right DT, now. <laughs> DOT. Yeah. Uh, but the DOT be copied. Okay. Uh, so we have concerns. And what we'll want to know is uh, what can we do on our own without, without the state? And you know, then we can also ask the the state to uh, to relook at the the intersection, the four-way stop sign. And they don't. The state doesn't do it themselves. The regional planning agency does it. So there's there's an intermediary there, and that's the old colony planning council. But even our representation can't ask. It's imperative because of how the intersections brought up. I mean, even when I brought it up too, when I after the accident, after signing uh, stuff for us. I actually went to the intersection to see what was going on, and I'm like, yeah, it's it's dangerous. It's dangerous, right. you know, just personally for me, from my point of view. And like I said, I have a little one, and well, not so little anymore, but you know, it would be in my car, and I won't be able to take that. And these guys deal with it every day. So, so I'm wondering, like I said, I've like I said, Josh Cutler or Vinny could do something for Mass DOT also, or you know, our liaison say, this is imperative because the board of selectmen of Pembroke asked us to bring this forth to you to look at due diligence and to make sure that we can get this done for these people right so so let's let's look at it with fresh eyes from the original report okay start start there and and then have the conversation and tomorrow night ed and i are meeting with the old colony planning council so it's uh we'll have the initial conversation tomorrow uh we'll, we'll have that conversation and and then uh we'll get our representation involved if we're not getting the answer we like yeah, I mean, it took forever to do uh, Pleasant Street and Washington Street, so we mm -hmm. um, have a head start on this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Soon enough, though, right? It's coming to the, did they open the bids yet, Pleasant and Washington? Uh, you know what, I don't was know. Was it last Thursday? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. All right. All right, so that's, we have a good plan for that, and I think we'll get, a, get the ball rolling very soon. Go ahead and move on to old business. And the first item on this is a record of approved bills and payrolls of May 30th, 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Sabrina, was this one that Bill signed? No. The one that John signed. The one that Mr. Brown signed. Oh, Because okay. I believe Mr. Bolter tried to, and they said no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to read that on this day and personally yes. review? Okay. I am pleased to report. I am pleased to report on May 30th, 2018, I personally reviewed seven accounts payable warrants totaling $329,599.60 and two payroll warrants totaling $1,299,780.84 prepared by the town accountant and authorized the itemized expenditures for payment. 
Motion to accept the report. Second. All righty, the motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I vote as well, so it passes four to zero to one. Bill abstaining. So the other thing I wanted to talk about under old business was I attended the annual county meeting uh, last Thursday. And the, uh, please report back, the usual business occurred with us approving a budget for the county. And the one item of note that was a little different than the usual business was a property was sold in Plymouth and two properties are gonna be bought or approved to be bought in Plymouth as well to give the county access to a, a lot of land. If anybody has any questions, please let me know as I attend. Does anybody else have anything under old business? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to ask the selectmen. Seeing no additional items under that, we'll move on to new business. I have something, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, I was seeing going through the uh, capital bond bill that was going through the House, uh, House 4549, that the $3 million that Vinny DiMacito put in in the Senate budget went through conference. And I believe, it, though, from my knowledge of reading it, because sometimes the bills on, on Beacon Hill are kind of difficult to read at times, uh, I believe it did pass, and to the $3 million, we're not sure when we'll be getting it, but if we're able to remind them that we did put this money in for a bond bill for construction of uh, public safety design and construction for our police and fire, uh, try to get that, get the ball rolling sooner than later. So we might not get it, you know, like not tomorrow, of course. It could be five years down the road for the bonding bill, uh, but not make sure it's 20 like we did with the new 14 project just kind of we have to kind of keep on them to make sure that we're getting our money for our police and fire so I mean that just came up to my knowledge as of today so I'm hoping that you know our town can actually move forward with that I think that's a great idea we'd like we can draft a letter yeah that'd be great all righty so that was a great item under new business go ahead and move on to upcoming issues on June 11th and 25th, the annual reappointments that were mentioned site will take place. On June 11th at 7 p.m., Robert Mann, Designated Business Association of DrVolks.com, <coughs> will be in for a Class 2 use license dealers, use license <coughs> to be exercised at 111 High Street. On June 11th as well at 7.15, the school committee will be in for a discussion regarding the fiscal year 2018 budgeting process. Also on June 11th at 7.45, the town accountants will be in with a recommendation on the fall special town meeting plan. A lot happening on June 11th. On June 18th, the summer schedule begins in which the selectmen will be meeting every other week. And lastly, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board of selectmen is June 11th, 2018. May I suggest we take a um, five minute recess to see if uh, Mr. Poulter and Mr. Thorne come back from the conservation hearing um, because we've got uh, something for executive session, I believe, don't we? Yes, it's not posted. Okay. Now you don't have to talk me into it. <laughs> <laughs> I just made a note on the agenda, I'm sorry. And given that, Arthur, do you still want to take a recess? Well, I don't think there's any need for it now. So if you want to take a motion to adjourn, I would make that. Second. All right, you have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so that passes 4-0 to, to 1. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.